So this video is about everything that happens when you go to MEPS for the physical and ASRAP confirmation. So what happened was you go to the hotel, you wake up. I woke up at like 3.40. At 3.40, I woke up at 3.40 so I could shower and everything. You have, if, uh, this is for the Marines, is why I'm wearing the pulley shirt because I'm now a Marine Corps pulley. You need to dress professionally. Uh, it needs to be a button-up shirt for the other branches it doesn't really matter like at least from what they've told me i don't know maybe because those people were shipping out i don't know what they were doing that day the, like because i spoke to a lot of different people there was a lot of people there that were shipping out that day and others were just going for the physical and then leaving like a week later like some people are leaving right away after their physical so that was really surprising to see how fast they can get them out but um so the from for the female females that are going for the Marine Corps, you need to. Um, I wore jeans, and you can wear sneakers, and it used to be a button-up shirt. And you need to make sure that you don't show cleavage. And if you're showing cleavage like I did, you need to like because the shirt that I had didn't button up all the way. You need to um, make sure you have an undershirt. I was so blessed that I brought one because. Like, they would have gave me a lot of shit for that, so I'm glad I did that. And then, I'll go and eat, and then you're going to come out, and there's going to be two buses. You can pick either one, doesn't matter. And then, they're going to be like, okay, this is what you guys need to do. You need to, um, you need to get off the bus and go to specific size depending on why you're there so if like if you've been to meps before and you failed the physical or if you haven't taken the asvab confirmation but you took the physical then you would go on a specific side and if you're leaving that day then you go on a specific side and if you haven't done any of those things this is your first time at meps and you go to all the way at the end and that's where i was and i was the only female there at least at the time because all the buses come at different times and so I was the only female, and then they were like asking us um, if we had any like contraband, or for me specifically, they were just like if I'm wearing a thong or anything like that, like sexy clothing, then no. They just want to make sure, but I was like, obvious, like not, it was not obvious to them, but like I know I'm not the type of person to wear that stuff, so it's just kind of weird, but I understood what they asked, why they asked. And then females go first, because that's just how they do it so I went online and then you have to go through um, a metal detector thing and you put your stuff in the basket and you put your stuff in you put it through the checker you can when you go to the other side you can see every everything that everybody's stuff is there is in their bags and then you go to uh, you had to go to the um, the board like not the board but like where you check in and stuff and you have to get your fingerprint you have to put no you have to put the fingerprint down first because that's how they make sure that you're going to each section at the time that you need to so that's the first thing i did and then i got the paperwork and so i was holding that basically the whole time there's times where i didn't need to hold it so we went upstairs and right away I made sure to be nice, calm, do not drink soda, do not drink coffee, because they're going to have coffee at the hotel, at least in my room they had coffee. Um, don't do, dr consume anything that, you're, that you know is going to get your blood pressure high, because I can only take it three times, and then you're going to need to go to a doctor and get a... Get, um, oh, I was watching another video, and you have to go to the doctor, you have to go to the doctor three times, like consecutively every other day so three days once and it's a big deal so do not consume anything like that will make your processing a lot more difficult because a lot of people fail like I like there's a lot of different reasons for you to fail um, the physical so next I got my blood pressure I was like boom done and then it was like okay go to the next room and they I don't have it anymore because when I left they took it off I don't know why some people kept theirs but they're different map like different map facilities in the country so um there's gonna be a sticker like this 
and it's just gonna be this big because there's two stickers so one sticker is gonna have your name and your branch and then the other and then at the bottom is gonna say while you're there but then I went to go get um, the hearing test and when you go into the hearing test at least in Fort Hamilton it sounds I was trying not to laugh so much because the guy that introduces you he takes forever introducing no not like the actual like man that collects your papers and stuff because the guy is going to collect your papers to like write down your score so oh, i'll describe the room first so first it's like a small room with a couple chairs and you're all next to each other but you're not allowed to look at the other person or you're not allowed to look behind you you have to look straight and then there's going to be headphones at the top and then a little clicker so they're going to tell you to sit down look straight and do that and put it on and what people say is that the sounds really faint i heard um it was faint like sometimes i thought maybe i was imagining the sounds just just because like it was really faint but it's not that you wouldn't be able to notice it. if you have good hearing you'll be fine like it's not that hard that people described it at least not for me and like some people would close their eyes for me personally closing my eyes didn't help i just left my eyes open and just look straight ahead of me and that helped me concentrate more so the beeping has different levels and for the most part they're like in, like it's evenly spaced out when the next beep is going to be so you shouldn't be surprised um when the sounds change you might be a bit surprised but anyway so the guy when he introduces you he's gonna be talking like this in a retro sound extremely slow and he's gonna be like the test is about to begin and i was trying so hard not to laugh i know all the all the other girls they took it super seriously and there's only three other girls i don't know i have a hard time trying not to laugh they make you do the eye test this test was something else because it's not like when you go to um your doctor's office and they're just like okay look at the wall and you need to read these letters out to me it was a machine and a machine is super high up so i had to like be on my tippy toes trying to put my head on the machine because i don't think the like you have to put your forehead on it for i think the light to turn on and first i got confused because i was just like am i supposed to look at the screen at the bottom and then it wasn't at the bottom it was up here it's just it was so tall for me i didn't know where i was supposed to look but anyway i forgot what it's called but it's like to know like my this hand is more up front than this hand because i'm telling how you guys will be seeing it so but i was like okay that would be easy that's easy right so but again it's on a monitor in this high up thing that i can barely reach and the guy he saw me struggling he didn't just, he was like it doesn't matter i wonder how this girl did it like if she stepped up on something because later on i met this girl she's like five seven and i don't know how she would have been able to reach it i was barely reaching it i don't know how she did but i'm 59 inches tall so anyway um they're gonna tell you which circles so first there's gonna be examples and he's like, okay, these are examples if you need to reference back. And so we have to see which one pops out on you the most. To be honest, to me, they all looked pretty similar. It was like at times I was like, okay, I could definitely see that. And then you're going to um, go to another room. And actually, when you go to that room, it's going to be like the briefing. So it's gonna take a bit depending on how many people are gonna they think are gonna be there they're gonna um just brief you on what mat what you're going to do exactly today about the physical especially uh like how they're gonna examine your genitalia your anus they're gonna look at you and how if you feel uncomfortable you can get somebody to chaperone you like chaperone means that they look over you so while the doctor's looking down there. Another person's also looking to make sure the doctor doesn't do anything wrong. And um, after that, they were like, oh, you have to sign like a bunch of papers. And you have to, in that, in that room too, you check off the same list that you checked off in your recruiter's office. It'll be like, have you done, have you done any drugs or have you ever had asthma? Stuff like that. 
and then the, uh, my recruiter told me about how the question is if I, um, if I was in good health. For this guy, he told us to already check it off. So when I was going through the list, it wasn't it confusing. I still read everything just in case there's another question like that. But um, it was extremely easy to fill out. You just have to follow the man's directions or else he'll get mad at you. After that, they says, okay, who needs to do that? ASVAB confirmation. And I got up and did it. Cause no, they're like, who has DPS? And that was me. So right away I got up and I got in line. There was, I was the only female again. And I had to go downstairs, um, sign in. There's going to be a bunch of old computers in that room. And at first I had a lot of problems. It was like, I say like 13 minutes trying to figure out the password to get in. Because I don't know, something was going on that day. And then I did the MEPS confirmation. If you did not cheat, not MEPS confirmation, ASVAB confirmation. If you did not cheat on the ASVAB the confirmation is going to be extremely simple and then they do a personality questionnaire type thing and it was i thought it was not really an accurate way to say who i am as a person because it was just like you so you had to choose between two boxes and it would be like i am not lazy i just don't work harder than i need to and i'm just like no that's not who i am and then it was i don't like being around other cultures i'm like no that's not who i am either so how do you pick between two bad things so you just had you needed us how to do it it was 160 questions some would be military based but most of them weren't uh, towards the end most of them were but most of them were just in, like questions i don't get why they would ask i have no idea but um anyway so this makes me look blue let me get through a white screen. Much better, much brighter. Anyway, my blood drawn. After that, I went to go get my blood drawn. And the lady, she wrap, wrapped my arm up. Oh, yeah, she wrapped my arm up. And then she was beating me really hard because she could not get my vein. So once she got my vein, she stuck it in. It was real quick after that. It was just, it was just like hard for her to find it so it like took a little bit more time than regular people i guess but i was never hit by a nurse like that so i was just kind of confused and i thought it was funny too i think a lot of things are funny but anyway after that is when i went to go pee because you have to take a drug test oh no before i was gonna mention this if you cannot drink anything with alcohol do not drink um do not use like mouthwash because mouthwash can make your alcohol thing as a positive so in the table with a bunch of the, all of the stuff you need to fill out um it's going to be this little breathalyzer thing that you need to blow in when the time comes and i passed it because i didn't drink any alcohol you have to push really hard not and if you push too hard it'll tell you to not push that hard but i don't know i'm i pushed as hard as i can and that passed me so after that, that's, um, after I went to get my, uh, after I went to go do the ASVAB confirmation and then I went upstairs to do my blood and then I went to, and then I went to go pee because they have to take your, um, take your urine. So what they make you do is, uh, they need to brief you on what's going to happen and then you have to go to the stalls. So it's two stalls in the Fort Hamilton one, two stalls for females. And you go into it, and um, the lady, she's going to watch you pee. And uh, you have to make sure that it's clearly visible for her to see your, your, you pee into the cup. And, and then you need to put the cup on the floor and uh, lift up your pants. And then hold the cup in front of you until the guy goes and dips it in. For It took like 10 minutes for this guy to come because he was doing the mails first. And he needed to walk back and forth so it was fine waiting it was just like i was like i wanted to crack jokes like by the time he comes it's gonna be cold but i didn't want to be like i didn't want her to get mad at me and make me leave or something so i didn't say anything because um i was laughing and then she's like this needs to be strictly professional so i didn't want to make any jokes while i was waiting and then if you don't haven't taken anything if your urine looks good it's gonna be all good it's not that you have to like 
he's gonna do everything so you don't have to really worry you have to sign papers again i thought it was kind of nasty because we all we're not allowed to wash our hands until he finishes doing the urine thing so i was like washing we were all writing our names down with the same pen that everybody else touched while they were still covered in urine so that was a bit nasty but afterwards you wash your hands right away so and then after that you go take your height and weight and then you have to get into a gown no before you take your height and weight you have to get into a gown so it's just your bra and underwear and then the gown you take your height and weight and then you have to go way into to get your actual physical so this is when they look at your genitalia and all that stuff and then what happened was i was waiting you know just talking to the other people there and then the lady's like okay come in she's like hurry up get in, um hurry up um get out of your bra and underwear and switch the gown to be backwards so the opening will be in the front and so i did that and then she was asking me the same questions that your recruiter would ask you about like if you had depression or anything like that um and i said no and um everything was a no 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 it was good for everything um and then so she's like okay get yourself on the table and i'm short and i didn't want to jump and so i'm just like why don't i just walk on the little thing and get up it like that but she didn't want me to do it like that she wanted me to leap and she's like you're joining the marine corps if you want to join the marines you need to jump what you should be asking is how high and i thought that was kind of funny but anyway so after that um after that you know she looked at everything she's gonna look completely at everything so if you have any um she's like the doctor will look at you naked absolutely everything she will see and um so if you have any like scars on you like if you have a self-harm but you self-harm in like the boob area or um in the bikini area they're going to see that and when they look at your genitalia stuff like that they're gonna make you open it for her to see so she's not going to touch you and it was really fast so that wasn't anything to worry about she was like, okay you don't got anything it was good she's like okay go get dressed and i went to go get dressed <sighs> and then after that you have to um go do um you have to go do like the actual physical type thing now like you have to do the PT, which is um, like the duck walk that people know for sure. And I'm going to put a, a video that's not mine, but another girl made. That's exactly the stuff they need to do. And some of it, like I didn't do perfectly, but I still passed it. Like, I don't know exactly what they look for to fail you, but they're going to make you bake, bend back. And if you have scoliosis, they're going to notice it. And it's like a big deal, even if it's slight scoliosis, unless you have um, I don't know if this is, they said it wasn't a disqualifying factor, I have no idea what happened to this female there that had it, apparently she says she, doctor said she didn't have it, but they still want to her to go to get an x-ray, I have no idea, God bless her, hope everything happens fine, I hope that she's able to join, but you're not allowed to exchange numbers or anything, so everybody that I met was one time and I'll never see them again, maybe I will, military is a small world, so maybe I won't see them again, but anyway so after that you eat lunch and so after um you weren't allowed to talk a lot when you're eating lunch because they want you to go go get out so um we got yelled at for talking and then um after you eat is when you find out if you're good like if you if you're able to do the oath because now we're getting closer to doing the oath and it's still a long, like, a couple hours till we get to do that, but the pay, like, the paperwork for the physical, the physical is the most important part, at least in my opinion, unless you have, like, arrest and all that stuff. As a 17-year-old in high school, the most important thing is the physical, especially if you didn't cheat on the ASVAB, and do not, like, it's just, do what your recruiter tells you to do, trust your recruiter because they want you to go they're not doing it for you to f they're not pushing you to go to maps for you to fail it 
they want you to pass or just trust your recruiter because these people, whenever you show a sign that you might be lying, they will fail you and they will make you either go get a doc, go to your actual doctor or something, whatever it may be. You'll clean your ears too. You have to clean your ears because this girl almost did not take her oath because her ears were dirty. She almost didn't make it. Mine was the last oath and she was almost like a no-go. So I'm glad that God let her come and take her oath, but I was worried. I was like, oh my God, because when you see that somebody might not be able to pass, it's really sad, especially if you're that person. You just don't know what to do because none of that is in your hands. It's what you told the doctors. So just be be careful what you tell them. Do not sound like you're suicidal. If you're su not suicidal, it should be no problem. I'm not. So I was like, no, I don't have suicide. So I should try looking at my hands and everything like that. I was like, I'm good. I'm nothing like that. So we were waiting there. It took a while. I was like scared because this is the moment, you know. And, you know, God blessed me and was able to pass me. So after that, they will actually, by the way, if you're flat-footed, um, tell your recruiter. And um, if it's like, so like, I'm not flat-footed, but like I thought I was because my mom is and everything. But just tell your recruiter, maybe he'll look to make sure he doesn't waste time. But I like, because there's a waiver for flat feet, depending on the branch and uh, whether or not you still be able to do physical things. So just tell your recruiter right away. Don't waste your time going to maps because you won't want to go back. I know I have to for shipping, but you don't want to go back to maps. And then, so um, they're just like, okay, you're good. And then I had to go downstairs to the Marine Corps liaison. And that's where um, I talked to the gunnery sergeant and he was just like, congratulations. And I was like, thank you, sir. And then I have to sign more papers. And then you go to the security place and that's where they take your fingerprints. So I did that. And um, this is like, if you passed everything, if you're going home, then you probably will make it to this point. So um, after that, I was just getting ready to go take the oaths. So we have to wait because the oaths are taken every hour. And then we went to go do our oath. We uh, we had to all sit in the room, watch a eight minute video about it, about the codes of conduct and all that stuff. And um, how. And how now that we're swearing in, we need to look better, behave better. We're not the same standards as military personnel because we're not in the military yet. Because we haven't finished boot camp. But you have to put yourself at a higher standard. At least don't get in trouble. Don't do anything stupid. Because the government will find out that you did it. And it may be a disqualifying factor. I don't know. It depends on the branch. Especially for the Marine Corps. It's extremely serious. All this stuff is MEPS, the physical, all that is much more serious in the Marine Corps. I do not know how it is in the other branches. So I'm just speaking for the Marine Corps. And then what happened? After that, uh, we went to the room. We took their oath. Um, and then we were going back into the room. And then we all had to sit back in the chairs and start signing the actual papers. It's like, they'll tell you how long you're going for and what job you're going to be. And if you haven't picked out your job, then they won't tell you. And you have to sit down and take a picture of yourself. Like, you don't take the picture, but the officer did. And then after that, boom, you're done. You're out of maps and you're good. If you're at that point, you pass. So it was a long day make sure to drink a lot of water because like i said you have to pee and oh well for the females right do not wear any sports bras make sure you wear granny panties that means that they have to cover your whole butt not showing anything in the front either make sure you uh you don't have to shave but i mean i did so like i i don't know i just just in case i didn't want to be like you're too hairy or something i don't know i just didn't want them try to prevent any problems 
as much as you can because if anything pops up because they will try to get something to pop up they're not i don't even know why they do it like i don't know if they're purposely trying to fail you or something but if something they see is not right they're gonna fail you on the spot either permanently or temporarily and you do not want to go back doing that process because it's more work for you and it's more work for your recruiters it's better to get everything done and you know get it over with so um, just make sure like make sure it's not a push-up bra either make sure it's a regular bra like um i wore a plain bra i was gonna pull it out but someone that i wore a plain bra and it had like um i had like a bow in the middle and i cut it out because i didn't want them to say anything about it they're very p picky about what you wear especially the doctors so they'll judge you on that and so that's about it you shouldn't if you told your recruiter everything and you signed the papers and there was no problems and you should be perfectly fine and you, if you there if you don't have any sexually transmitted diseases you're good like you should have nothing to worry about but don't not make it look like you have something to worry about because then it could be disqualifying so um that's it that's it and then well when i finished i went to I forgot whose office and they gave me a welcome package also they give you this shirt because now you're a pulley so now you get the pulley shirt um, got this and I have to study information in here I don't you do not pick your MOS yet I know some branches pick their MOS at MEPS but I pick my MOS today with my recruiter and then he goes to MEPS and tells them that's what MOS that I want and then Hmm. This packet is physical fitness. It tells you height, weight, um, the minimum requirements for the IST and the PFT. So you have to get on it if you're not already exercising. Because exercise, at least for the Marine Corps, it is a lot. And then you get two stickers, United States Marine Corps sticker. And proud to be... A, a proud parent of the of a u.s marine so that's pretty cool so you can give that to your mom dad whenever i would i want to give mine to my mom when i'm actually a marine because i don't want to put that thing there when it's not true you know what i'm saying so anyway that's gonna be the end for this video if you guys have any more questions about maps you can just comment them down below and if you want me to make another marine related, I'm not actually marine yet, but I'm going through the process. So if you want me to make a video about it, then I can. Um, anyway, until next time. Bye.